Hi guys, welcome back to the Birds Party channel. Today I'm going to show you how to start this a really cool, super fun jungle theme tablescape, which is perfect for a kid's birthday party, something low key that you may be hosting at home, or for any other event that you are celebrating this summer. There are some really easy, fun DIY ideas that I hope you guys are going to enjoy and going to feel inspired to recreate at home. And our first DIY idea are these really fun, they're like kind of furry uh, napkin rings that kind of match our theme. And I found this a furry adhesive paper in my local craft store and I'll leave some links down in the description box of similar items that you can buy online wherever you are in the world. And obviously we're going to need some napkins and I've chosen these kind of jungle themed napkins. And to make our napkin rings, I'm just using a ruler as a template, so you can use whatever size you like, but the width of the ruler was really good for uh, measuring the width of the napkin ring. So basically I just traced it along and just cut it off. And because it's an adhesive paper, obviously you can use other types of paper like uh, scrapbook paper, use a little bit of glue or some glue dots or even hot glue, and you just fold the thing around your napkin and voila, super easy, but I think it adds a kind of special touch for uh, particularly this theme and especially because the paper is furry so it's super fun and tactile as well for the kids. And because I had some paper left over, you know, the furry adhesive paper, I decided to make these place card holders that you can put little cool cards uh, like these ones, you know, with the face of the animals, some printable designs or anything else you like. So basically I'm using these as if they were name cards, you know, so each child knows where to sit. But you can add little messages, you can add little riddles, fun games or conversation starters or anything else you like to put at each place setting. And I'm using some corks and these fun little cards, which once again, I'll leave a link down in the description box. But basically you can use anything you like that goes with this theme. And of course, we're going to be using that super fun, you know, leopard print. Is it leopard print or jaguar? I don't know what kind of print it is, but it matches our theme perfectly. So if you haven't got that, like I said, use some scrapbook paper or something else that matches the jungle theme. And once again, you don't have to use these ideas for a kid's birthday party. You can repurpose them for a ladies lunch and for something a little bit more grown up, a little bit more chic. You know, if you're having girlfriends around for lunch or a baby shower or anything else you like. Or just for a fun summer tablescape so basically I just use the width of the corks and just measured around my papers you can see and simply cut the whole thing and at the end you just wrap the paper around the cork if you're using scrapbook paper like I said once again use a little bit of hot glue just normal sticky glue or even glue dots to secure the whole thing in place but come to think of it if you're using a furry paper like mine uh, do not use any uh, school glue or glue dots, it won't work because you have the furry part if you're using felt or something like that that's printed. Uh, mine was adhesive like I said, so if you're using normal regular cardstock or scrapbook paper just use regular glue. But if you've got something a bit textured, a little bit furry then hot glue is your best bet. And as you can see it's super easy, just wrap the whole thing around and you can repurpose some old corks that you may be already have a home if not you can buy these in local craft stores as well they sell them um, ready to be used for crafts and different purposes and then after you finish wrapping very carefully you're going to take a craft knife and you're going to make a slit in the center of your cork obviously this is not a craft for kids so only grown-ups only to do this part because it's super dangerous make sure that you protect yourselves and then you push lightly just to make an indent on the cork and a little bit on the fabric or the paper if you wish and then what I did because the corks were quite stiff I used a ruler to kind of just press it into the center and just make the groove a little bit more um, pronounced if you like so that I could insert my cards because my cards were quite thick so you may not need to do this step but I decided to do that just to make sure that everything uh, looked nice and then you have a really cool little place card holders that you can use to decorate your table. For our next DIY project are these leopard print place mats. 
I am absolutely in love with this print. I can't get enough of it. I've seen it on fashion everywhere. So I decided to add it to my jungle thing table. And if you have like a wooden charger or a wooden board or something that you can use that is round and wooden, go for that. I only had one at home that was left over from my previous project. So I just used as a template to cut out uh, some placemats and I'm using here or repurposing some old placemats that were quite battered and you know that I didn't use and I had kind of like different colors so I decided to use them and the material is kind of like a foamy material uh, almost like a foam uh, craft foam that you can find in a local craft store so if you haven't got any placemats that you can repurpose or reuse for this project use a piece of foam or I think even poster board would work really well as well or even cardboard if you're you know in a pinch you don't want to buy anything just use and recycle old cardboard boxes and I think for a kids party it would be totally okay but like I said if you've got a wooden uh, charger or a wooden a round piece of um, wood that you can use for this craft use that because I think you get the best results and basically the first thing that I did like I said was to trace around uh, my charges because the colored ones were quite large and uh, it didn't fit with my table size very much so I trimmed it down you know as you can see very easily with a pair of scissors and then I just used that as the base for my leopard print charges now I don't know if you noticed I had some uh, labels on the back of the charges and to clean that off very simply I used some acetone so you can't use nail polish remover if it's acetone free so it has to have acetone in it and this is 100% acetone or pure acetone that I had at home just took a little piece of kitchen paper and just wiped the whole thing making sure to get rid of any oil stains or any uh, glue residue or anything like that so there's a little tip for you and it works really well obviously you can't do this on every type of plastic because you might get some sort of discoloration and the paint coming off but because we're going to paint these placemats no problem there but actually it worked really well as you can see here and to create my fun leopard pattern onto the placemats i'm using three uh, types of paint are just acrylic paint yellow black and brown and you see that in a minute and because my place masks were colored to begin with uh, I decided to paint them white just to give me a blank canvas literally uh, and you wouldn't get any of the green the yellow or the orange seeping through obviously if you already have a white base like say you're using poster board or um, foam that is already white you don't need to do this step Obviously, again, if you're using a round piece of wood or a round charger that is colored, I suggest using some chalk paint, which dries really quickly and goes on really nice and smooth. And just use that uh, to just prime your placemats before doing the leopard print paint technique. And next up, we're going to paint the whole thing once again with acrylic paint. And this time I'm using kind of like a mustardy yellow to match the designs on my tableware, you know, the napkins, the, the goblets and everything else that has a jungle theme and has a leopard on it. So basically I'm just using a foam brush and just painting that on top of the white. And uh, as you can see here, you'll be perfect if you're using cardboard once again and foam board or even wood so just paint that and let it dry before we start doing our leopard print technique now for the fun part we're going to need the brown the black acrylic paints and a small paint brush and I have tried this technique using sponges and different other uh, tools to help me get the spots on there. But I found the best way to do this was to actually use our fingers. And this will be a super fun project to do with young kids. So make sure your yellow part is dry. Just dip your index finger or any other finger that you like and just start creating your spots. Make sure that they're not very even. This is why this is so fun and kids can have a really good time with this craft because you don't have to be precise in fact if you're not precise it makes it even more realistic and makes the pattern look even better and do not worry about any little mistakes as you can see there just make sure that you load your finger up with paint and you can use your thumb as well as you can see here 
and uh, you have enough paint on your fingers to just create each of the brown spots and basically you just go around and make them as spaced out as you can not forgetting the edges use different fingers as well so this is a really tactile project and really fun for young kids and grown up kids as well so once you do that um, and you create your different brown spots as you can see quite spaced out we're gonna go in with the black to finish them off Now to create the next uh, bit of our pattern we're just going to take the black acrylic paint and the small paint brush and we're just going to go around each of the brown spots you don't need to wait for the brown paint to dry you can carefully uh, just go around uh, the brown spots with the paint brush without smudging them but if you think that you have young kids and they're gonna get everything smudged and whatnot so just let the brown dry first before you do this part and once again just load up your brush with enough paint so you get a really nice uh, opaque finish and just go around each of the brown spots there's no rhyme and reason there's no uh, special pattern in fact the more random the better the pattern will look the whole thing so just go around each of the brown spots adding little details in black as you can see here Now when you finish with uh, the brown spots, just take a little bit more black paint and randomly add little dots and little splodges and spots here and there to fill in any of the gaps and make your uh, leopard pattern come alive if you like. So whenever you have a little space or the brown spots look a little bit too spaced out, just take your paint brush and kind of press it and dab it to make sure that you have nice coverage all around and the pattern looks really good. Now to make your placemats waterproof, you know, food proof, and also to make the paint last a lot longer, just go over the top, make sure that your paint is dry first, you know, the leopard spots are dry, <laughs> otherwise you ruin the whole thing, and use some PVA glue, just regular white glue, and just brush that on top and let it dry before you use your placemat. So you'll be able to clean them off really easily and your paint will last a lot longer. Next up, to decorate my table centerpiece, I made these really cool raffia vases. And there's nothing simpler than to make these, but they look so fun and look like something that you bought in a high-end store, honestly. And basically, all you're going to do um, for this craft is to take a hurricane vase, and this I'm recycling some that I already had at home, but you can buy, you know, vases like this at the Dollar Tree online as well, and some bits of raffia. So basically, you're going to trim your raffia down to size if you want to begin with, Tie a large piece around the middle of the vase and here I'm turning the vase so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Fold a piece of raffia in two as you can see to create a little loop at the top. We're going to pass that through the center piece of the raffia and just going to tuck in the ends as you can see to create a little knot and just pull it tight around the middle to create lots of these little fringes if you like. The length of them will depend on the size of your vase and you can just trim off any excess at the end or as you go along, it's up to you. So this is really easy to make, super inexpensive and you create this really nice high-end looking uh, vase or you can also use it as a candle holder or just as a decorative piece filled with shells or something else, you know, depending what kind of decor that you're going for. And just trim off, like I said, the excess of the raffia and you're left with this little skirt of raffia you can leave it as it is it looks quite wild and quite funky say for a tiki party or hawaiian kind of luau but i decided to add another piece of raffia to keep the fringe in place and i just then repeated it for two more vases and on the middle vase of the table i just added longer pieces of raffia 
Now that all my DIY pieces were done, to dress my table I used a leather uh, table runner as you can see. I tried to iron it on the back but I didn't get obviously uh, the creases out as you can see but no big deal, we're just gonna add some more decor on top. And I'm using these really large uh, placemat leaves that you can buy on online and once again I leave some links down in the description box for you and I've seen them literally everywhere since last summer. So I had these at home and I decided to use them and kind of like layer my table so it adds more interest, more color and makes everything pop. So on top of the leaves I added our DIY leopard print placemats and as you can see this is why I trimmed them down to begin with so you would get a plate in the middle and then on top of that I added a super cool little wildcat uh, name card holders or place card holders but you can add anything as you saw on the back you can write little riddles little jokes or you know fun conversation starters for your guests then i just proceeded to add the uh, napkins which already had the cutlery inside and i used bamboo cutlery for that to you know keep that kind of natural vibe you know jungle theme vibe going throughout the table and i think it looks so cute with all the leopard tableware that i'm using some green straws and here i use some stickers to create some fun straw decorations for the kiddos obviously these are just some ideas you know you don't have to do the exact same thing you may not find the same tableware where you live but something similar in those colors you know browns blacks kind of like tan you know use lots of wood different textures and kind of like natural materials like the leather the fur the wood the raffia you know so that kind of brings the whole jungle thing together on your table And to finish things off, I added my super cool raffia vases uh, filled with uh, some faux monstera leaves and some palm fronds. And once again, these kind of faux leaves you can buy at a local craft store, uh, even garden centers. And I'll leave some links down in the description box for you for similar items that you can buy uh, online. And basically, I used three of those spaced out along the table, and I think it just adds some texture, the wow factor and helps you create a really cool a centerpiece without much cost or effort. And to finish things off, I added a couple of a bamboo uh, candle holders. I forgot to put the candles in it, but that will be helpful for your actual party. And I just added some paper monstera leaves scattered around my table and I cut those with my Sizzix. And to finish off each place setting, I took some matching uh, cupcake cases and I filled them with uh, chocolate balls, which I had at home. Obviously, you don't have to do this. You can put any color candy you like or even real cupcakes. And I just added a little cupcake topper in between. But if you haven't got time to bake or you can't bake or, you know, you just want something a little bit more fun for the kids to nibble while they're waiting for their dinner, you know, which also doubles as a party favor. So you have at each place setting these little chocolate balls. I love how this table turned out, you guys. I love every single detail and how easy it was, as you saw. You know, you can get the kids involved in the DIY uh, steps, in preparing the table, even setting the table as well. You know, there's no nothing wrong with that. So if your kids are a little, little bit older, you can get them involved. And I think it makes the party a little bit more fun. So these ideas are very low key, as you saw, if you're having a small gathering at home, with social distancing and all that you know so you have just four place settings that i've set to give you guys some ideas but like i said you can use some of these projects and some of these decorations for a grown-up party as well for a themed baby shower or for any other event that you're celebrating this summer I hope you guys enjoyed the ideas and feel inspired to have a go at home and if you like this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up it really helps my channel and lets me know you like this kind of content and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos that I upload here weekly thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time take care bye bye